Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Jossa Show. I am here with Brian on the ones and twos over in Gas Di- Gas Digital South. I don't know what do you call it. <laughs> oh, this is just my uh, my home fortress. This is this is where I live and work. All in, all in this room and seat. <laughs> We got a great episode for you today. Episode 680 with Kurt Vanderhoof and Mark Lopez of Metal Church fame. Mark is just joining the band on vocals. He's an incredible vocalist. You've seen him sing for Ross the Boss for uh, for a bunch of bands. He, he's this guy is this guy's got pipes. <laughs> And this is a fun one. We even get into a little bit of that uh, that stuff that we like to say for the Patreon or for for uh, gas digital subs at the end. We don't talk about it during the YouTube intro, but I want to thank everybody who subscribed over at gasdigitalnetwork.com or gasdigital.com, right? Check out the new site. New site. New hotness. It's looking good, and you're going to feel good. When you get all these other episodes, Marty Friedman, Dave Lombardo, you're getting all these other episodes early. Brian Fair from Shadows Fall, who's going to be playing uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest. But, yes, yeah, subscribe Brandon over at Gas Digital. Oh, Brandon Boyd from Incubus. That was a great episode. That's up now for He's our great. subs. Incubus. Shout out that handsome bastard. Yes, uh, listen, she can still steal my girl. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's Mr. Steal Your Girl right there. That's new metal, Mr. Ste- Actually, what do you call it? <laughs> Alternative rock, Mr. Steal Your Girl? Just whatever it is, man. Just stay away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Monarch Heavy. M-N-R-K Heavy.com is the site to go to after the podcast today. And pre-order the new Somnuri album, Desiderium, as Brian would say. Desiderium. Right, desiderium. Desiderium, and right now... I'm going to find out what that means before the end of this ad. Please do. Right now, you can get... uh, They're doing three for 60 shirts over there for Somnuri shirts. Come see them play the Milwaukee Metal Fest pre-party with yours truly as well. May 25th at The Rave in Milwaukee. Somnuri Desiderium. Say it five times fast. Go pre-order now. Use the promo code 666 at monarchheavy.com. Uh, uh, while I have it's you. A feeling of loss or grief for something lost. Oh, I love it. Great album title. Yeah, and thanks. the vinyl looks great. The CD looks awesome. You can pre-order it now. Monarchheavy.com. Promo code 666. And while I have you, speaking of the Milwaukee Metal Fest pre-party, we're running a sale on the meet and greets. If you want to meet Paul, Paul Bostaff from Slayer, if you want to meet Kirk Winstein from Crowbar, Dino Cazares from Fear Factory, Tim Ripper Owens, check out these badass new Ripper shirts. Boom, check it. Use the code Paul10 for the rest of this week and weekend, and you'll save 10% at martyrstore.net. Of course, when you go to Milwaukee Metal Fest, stop by the indie merch store.com. Ten, they'll have the two big oh sorry i'm supposed i'm not supposed to swear oh, you're good. i got beeps <laughs> they're gonna have the biggest vending set up there and if you want to get some gear before the show to rock at the show i say be that guy like get you know if, if you want to be that guy get a napalm death shirt and then go watch napalm death you know what i mean Hell get yeah, a deeds dude. of flesh shirt buy a deeds guy. of flesh shirt and well, then go watch be. Deeds of Flesh. IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JASTA10. Link is always in the show notes. Of course, kicking off the Milwaukee Metal Fest and one of our most diehard sponsors, CenturyMedia.store. They have Napalm Death kicking it off with us. Then they have Frozen Soul playing Saturday, Sanguis Sugabog playing Sunday, and a ton of other acts. CenturyMedia.store, no promo code needed. Last, but certainly not least, metal blade records we got metal church on the show we got metal blade sponsoring the show how much fu- how much more metal can you get it's it's just the universe telling telling you that you got the heaviest show on the planet dude that's it and 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 metal blade metal blade has put out some of my favorite records throughout the years i'm so happy they're sponsoring the show and the milwaukee metal fest and right now they have the new death ray vision which is their third album. You know my boy, Mike D from KSE, from Kill Switch Engage. Oh, they got yeah, a new dude. vocalist. You know Mike D, does all the killer artwork, the t-shirts. No Mercy from Electric Eyes is due out June 30th on Metal Blade and features new vocalist Keith Bennett, who's bringing a whole bunch of piss and vinegar to the already volatile mix. And uh, and yeah, what, what more do you want from members of Kill Switch Engage and Overcast? It's going to be awesome. Death Ray Vision, new album on Metal Blade Records, No Mercy 
from Electric Eyes coming out June 30th. All right. We got Kurt and Mark from Metal Church. Enjoy it, baby. My friend, the lead singer of Hate Breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jasta is in the building. That's what's up. Jamie Jasta from the metal band Hate Breed. That guy's famous. Coffee, death metal, and push-ups. That's Jamie Jasta. Remember Jamie Jasta? You know him. He's podcast, but he's also he's a metal man. I would say you need that. That shit is hard. All right, what is up, everybody? I am here with Kurt and Mark from Metal Church. We are very happy to have you guys. And uh, and I love a story with a happy third act. What would you call what? What is this? This in the story arc of Metal Church. What is this next? We are the gods of four chances. <laughs> <laughs> I I love it. I how did you guys meet? How did, how did this happen? Like, was there auditions? Was there no, not really. other we names to, going around? When we decided to keep going, it was it was more of we didn't want to make a, a big production and a big natural nat- national international search for a singer. So we wanted to kind of just see if we could just find somebody. And Mark was already in our orbit with through Stet and Steve. And uh, there was one other guy that we checked out who was local here that I had knew, knew, knew about. And but they suggested Mark. And so we started, you know, just started the process, you know, again, the whole thing has been one step at a time and just basically, so we just started working with Mark and it just, it kept going, it kept working and it kept working and it kept working. And so, and then we could do that all under the radar just in case something didn't work out, something happened, didn't, we wouldn't make a big, huge, you know, deal about it. So we did it all under the radar and it just, it just kept going and it kept working and it kept working. So. I'm happy to hear. <laughs> yeah, there you have it. Thank you. Good night. So, yeah. no, I, I love that because I've been a firm supporter of bands carrying on, you know, through mm-hmm. tragedy, through the ups and downs, the, the different trends. And I, and I, I can appreciate all air. Like if I, if I'm a real fan of the band, I can appreciate all the eras and appreciate, you know, the, every band has the guy who's kind of leading the charge, who's, who's making the calls on certain things, but it really is dependent on that guy creating an amazing group around the brand, right. Or around the Mm -hmm. band name. Otherwise you're going to get so-and-so's, you know, whatever, or two different versions of, you know, we've seen that too, where it's like, Rats the band's back together, but it's the original bus driver or something. <laughs> right. It's, no, no offense to foreigner. I, you know, I, I love well, me some double vision. I love wow, me some. Uh, well, yeah, but the fo- last time I saw foreigner, Mick wasn't there, so it was a foreigner tribute band, a freaking great foreigner tribute band. Yes, nonetheless. But it was like, oh, that's kind of weird. At least Mick needs to be there, but it, you know. I mean, they're doing a great job, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and and then that, that has to be specified, but with, with metal church, you know, there's such a rich history and such a great catalog that now you're going to continue to keep alive. And, and just in, just in setting up Milwaukee metal fest, just seeing how many people, you know, on our survey and, and on our socials were saying, you know, we're hearing these things that, you know, metal church is going to continue. And then I, I, I didn't get a hold of you in time. Yes. And, and and the Chicago show was an exclusive yeah. which, respect to them because they saw they, they must have had some. What do you call that? Insider knowledge, insider Inside trading, <laughs> inside trading e- going on there. <laughs> yeah, that ESPN. Yeah, yeah because the, the, the reaction was like everybody wanted you to continue. And I thought that was really positive and inspiring because, you know, and, and I just it had is. William I had William Duvall on uh, right before you guys from uh, from Allison Chains. And he's you know, he had some big shoes to fill as well. Uh, but the fact that the fans want the music and want to hear it live, they want loud amps in the face and they want the band out there. I mean, that's got to feel amazing. Absolutely. I mean, after all these years, you know, the fact, I mean, when you're in it, you know, it's really hard to have a perspective on it, but just the fact, I mean, the fact that we're doing this right now, you know, 40 years on, that's like, really, you know, when you're in it, you don't really realize it, you know, but then again, as a fan of music myself, 
I'm that way with bands that I like, you know, the same thing, but it's weird when you're in it. But when you do realize that it, it's, it's not lost on me at all. I mean, the fact that we're even still doing this at our age is, you know, phenomenal and it's a blessing beyond belief, you know? So you have to, I'm, I've really taken the road where it's like any of it is I'm just grateful for. I mean, not many people get to do this at this level, let alone for 40 years. You know? I mean, and interestingly enough, I mean, what do you guys are talking about? Like, <laughs> I've been a fan of metal shirts since the first record. So like I'm I came I came in as on the fan perspective for real, you know? And and it was it, you know, and I it, until I hit the stage it still really hasn't hit. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be you know, weird. I, I, I wouldn't well, want to be you. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really freaking surreal for me because like the first two metal church albums growing up were like really important and like even they were always in my go-to list when I wanted to hear something to get me all fired up, you know? And so like, kind of like carrying, you know, having the responsibility of doing this is, you know, it's cool and nerving. And, uh, you know, the fans have been amazingly receptive yeah, right? so far, yeah. you know, um, you never yeah, see it, comments this good. I mean, you rarely believe me. Dude. Comments on the internet. No pressure, Mark. Yeah. Brutal. But I that was really cool to see. Like, I yeah. think we need more of that. We need to yeah. we need to promote that. Like it's easy to to go on and comment when you don't like something. But when you do, just because maybe other people aren't out there expressing positivity doesn't mean that you shouldn't. So I loved that, that the collective consciousness of yeah. the metal church fans, they all felt like, you know what, we need to share these positive opinions. And that I was like, wow, this is a great sign for what's to come. Yeah. Um, but that's but, what uh, we were like on the phone going, do you believe you this read them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I was like, in a, I was in an airplane. I was taking a flight and, and when the thing came out and I was like, I had really bad internet thing. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like the, the worst time. And the, Oh, I'm waiting, waiting for the hate. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Right. Everyone goes, no, I'm dude, if it's really good. And I'm like, no way, no way. And I'm like, I can't see it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is cool. And then I land and it was like really good. And I'm like, okay, that's yeah. good. All right, we can yeah. move on. <laughs> yeah, and there's always, no matter what you do, you could do, you know, back in black or dark side of the moon. There's going to be people, this sucks. This mix sucks and stuff. You always have those idiots, you know, everybody gets them. So you have to learn to skip over that and you look at the percentage, but just the overall percentage of the response was like, Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and also just from the promoter standpoint too, it's hard, and it's hard for me to kind of switch from, you know, hat to hat, but I was thinking, wow, Europe is, is going to go crazy for this. And now I think South America too. I mean, metal will never die. And, and the fans are so supportive. I mean, we, I see it a lot with it, with Ripper just producing his stuff and, and, and Love D you know, like Ripper, he's out there. He's going to go out there and do this run with Udo. Oh, yes. And it's just, so cool. I love seeing these opportunities created because in all these other genres and we're and metal still looked at as kind of like the redheaded stepchild of all the, <laughs> of all right. the genres, but there's, but there's not a lot of um, legacy acts in other lanes that can get this support in Europe and South America. It might be in one lane in the States or Canada or whatever. So I just, it's great to see the global, um, response to this now will you will you do a a world tour are you gonna dive like face first or are you gonna just no, we're gonna take it one step world? at a time we're gonna take yeah. it one step at a time yeah, and we're, we're kind of, kind of like rebuilding it you know yeah we're, we're gonna you know it. everything has been we just kind of one bit a little bit let's see how this works hey okay the record's done that came out good let's put it out people are like responding okay let's take another step you know so we have the show some you know the show stateside here in june and that'll be a really good barometer for, you know, working as a band again, which we haven't done for over three years, you know, and doing all that again. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. And our, if an opportunity to tour comes up, that makes sense. If somebody's that interested, if it works, then yeah. But right now we're just doing, doing some shows and just kind of seeing how it happens and, yeah. you know, not trying to put too much pressure on ourselves either, you know. Yeah, some the good cool festivals in Europe and stuff too, you know. So. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, that's those. They're they're if they're not already coming, you know, calling now. Uh, yeah. I'm, I imagine they are. I mean, I'm I'm already booking some stuff into deep into 2024 yes, too. Exactly. So mm -hmm. Do you do you guys 
what is the dream tour? Like, what if you get Saxon or one of Judas Priest is going out again? Like, Any of I them. can see. Yeah, you. sure. <laughs> but, and, and, the yeah, and the thrash tours too. Yeah. yeah, anything that we're not playing by the salad bar, you know, or anything, yeah. you know, anything like yeah. that, it would be great. You know, just a real tour where, you know, we can we can do it. I mean, again, it being as young as we are now, it's we got to be a little bit careful. You know, we can't just go out and, you know, live in a tour bus, you know, forever, un, you know, and playing crappy shows and, you know, and just slugging it out. You know, we can't you can sort of do that, but not really like we used to. And we don't want to, you know, we, we want to, you know, we want to play. We want to play good shows because the people, when they do show up, we want to make sure that it's a good stage. We have some good sound and we can do a good job, you know? So. I, I loved it when um, Queensryche started doing this uh, casino circuit and getting all these scorpions dates. And now they did the, the, the priest thing. And I could totally see that happening with metal church where the momentum builds That'd be awesome. yeah. with, you know, with the strength of such a great, you know, new singer. And that, and that was to, to Todd's credit. I think if you don't deliver the goods, like the, the product itself, the music itself has to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Anytime, anytime you're replacing any member really. Ugh, yeah. But especially the singer. Yeah. 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 yeah no so, pressure. um, <laughs> but I, I just had Bobby Blitz on and I just had, um, yes. we got Lombardo coming up. Like it's a great time just in general where I could see all these different variations of package tours happening. And I, and I asked, I asked Bobby Blitz, I'm like, you know, Metallica is going to have to, they're gonna have to do something. And I say Metallica, Overkill, Testament, Death Angel, Metal Church, all of them. I mean, they need to do it. No disrespect to Tool, because I saw Tool got announced on the um mm -hmm. the Indio show. But that's but a if, different thing, though. That's that's but, a, that's a different thing. That's but it didn't have the punch, it didn't have the kick it would have if it said Metallica, Testament, Exodus, Metal Church overkill you know overkill, what i mean like yeah. that's just mm -hmm. that's just my feeling you don't have to yeah. say either way but if you got the call it's a it's a definite yes oh yeah right? yeah of course oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I, I don't know we'll think about it yeah, <laughs> no it, but, you know it, it's so much of it to, to me is it's you know you think about well what metallica is doing now with their the the tour the from what i've seen they have a lot of the newer bands on the bill correct is that what they're doing so no, I mean, it's terrible they, they, they they have they have uh five finger death punch on some right it's crazy to think that yeah that technically they are kind of a newer well, new yeah new to us <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you played with metallica do you remember oh boy early 90s really mm -hmm. was it a tour or just a festival yeah it was a tour i mean i actually wasn't in the band metal church was out with them and uh but it was the early 90s and uh yeah, I think yeah, it was it was wasn't that it the was human somewhere. factor tour or something? Something like that. Yeah. 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 No, it was I know the history. Yeah. <laughs> that it just to me it has to happen. Or the different variations of the bands that are coming back and putting out great material now. Like I just listened to this latest Exhorter again. I've been listening to that for since it came uh, out. There's so much to me, there's there's so many Oh, you gotta you gotta oh sorry, I ex know, I, uh, Exhorter. It's order, dude. Great. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, I, I don't know. There's a whole world out there that's to me could be combined and needs to be. I think you'll see when you start doing these festivals too, that this new generation of kids, they, who never got to see a lot of you guys, they're so hungry. And, and we see it with the second and third and even now this fourth and fifth, I guess you could say there's five waves of, of metal but what it what is say like the best band you've heard recently that you've been jamming out on new band or current band yeah current or new oh for me it's blackberry smoke you know okay good southern rock good songwriting and just good classic rock you know or i love the darkness i think they're great for oh, arena the rock darkness is great yeah yeah i love that stuff you're gonna laugh for me <laughs> You know what's new to me? You, you're gonna get a kick out of this. I've like just discovered Terra. Nice. And I'm like, whoa, where has this been? <laughs> Keepers <laughs> I of the love it when that happens. Hasn't left my player in months. And like, 
I feel like it's a new band realizing it came out in like 29, 13 or something. I'm like, wow. I, Hard. I, I find I'm going like, a, you know, like Dark Ain, another band that like I just absolutely Great. like phenomenal. And um, I know Nakaris, you know. Oh, Cole, yeah. Like we Cole. tried to book them. Yeah, that, is that um, how you say it? I and Anel Anel Nathrak, which is a Nathra, is, I thought it was I thought it was Nathrak, and the guy's like, Nathra, no, that's not how yeah. you say it. I think so. Yeah, it's from the uh, Excalibur movie. It's the is the, it? the chant from Merlin. Anel Nathrak. Da 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 da. Ah. That's the spell. The, the the charm of making. There you go. <laughs> wow, I was. I was I was gonna have a, a strict if I can't pronounce the band name I can't book them on Milwaukee Metal Fest rule, <laughs> but I once I said that people were like dude you gotta get a null wait I was calling it a null Nathrak no I mean it's probably right maybe I'm saying it wrong <laughs> yeah. I don't know we got that New England thing going so who knows <laughs> true but you can't read the logo yeah yeah well you they, can't so. Yeah. <laughs> They were another Looks like a bunch a of, of kindling people. thrown in a pile. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. But they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of people wanted them too. So there's crossover there with all the yes. different subgenres yep. of metal. Um, but when I was thinking about this this show coming up in June, I mean it, it's good. I think that it's it's gonna be tight, sweaty, close, like probably is there a barricade at Reggie's? Do they do that? Yeah, is there it? was okay. yeah, last time I've okay. been there, yeah. Okay. I'll be on who, the barricade. It won't matter. All right. Who else is who else is on the bill and, and why is that the first show? Yeah. Like why why Chicago? Was it just that fell into place? It just kind of yeah. fell. Yeah. One of those things. It kind of just happened. They were it the first like, to call, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was first to call. It was a good it was a good deal. It was a good opportunity. And we're like, we'll get a star somewhere. You know? Absolutely. There's got to be a first show somewhere. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. There it is. And you, <laughs> and you didn't want it to be in one of your hometowns because then it would just be guest list and, hey, remember me? Can my, well, my <laughs> it's funny because like two weeks later from that, we're doing a two nights in my hometown in Stett's hometown. So it, it's kind of almost like the same, except we get a couple of shows beforehand. That's it. Right, right. You know? Yeah, you to plug, the, plug the tickets for that. Where can they get tickets for that? Because you're gonna get your your guest list punishers are gonna. Come oh no! I already told everybody's gonna buy <laughs> tickets already. I already guest did, it. and it's great because everybody is. I was like, I don't have to be the asshole. I said the only people that are getting in on my guest list are my parents. That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So plug. Is the show sold out, or should we plug them right now and get? Well, the let's plug it. Yeah, yeah. It's at the Vault in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And it's a Friday and a Saturday, June 23rd, 24th. And then the 25th, we're playing at um, Ashbury, New Jersey, at Ashbury Lanes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, right. the skating rink or the bowling yeah. alley or something. Bowling right? alley, yeah. Yeah. We played there before. It's, that place is awesome. I can't wait to bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to put, and put, put <laughs> the boss, one put, of them. put Bruce on the guest list for that, right? Asbury, is that's like his... That's his knack, right? Put the boss on there. No put shit. Put Max Weinberg on the list. That's what I do when I go to People City. No. I just put him on the list. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no. Well, and I, then the, I did. I did that once in a certain country, and it, it didn't go over too. Well. Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. You gotta I, edit I was this in part Russia. Out. Let's just say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oops. I put it on the list, and people are like, "Oh my god, really?" I'm like, "Come on." <laughs> i'm like really dude you think he's gonna show up come on <laughs> you gotta put like the most obscure sports people on there and then they get all excited like at the box office they go really and then they it spreads so quickly like really you're good unless it's not or you could fuck with them like one time we put bill buckner on and rest in peace bill buckner but you put him on the guest list and people are like is he really showing up they're still mad about like the one play or <laughs> <laughs> i like that idea actually that's pretty funny that's yeah. cool what is going on quick interruption letting you know today's episode is brought to you by metal blade records one of our best most longest I, i'm probably one of the best metal labels of all time the long one of the longest running purely heavy music labels and they have goat whore playing milwaukee metal fest on Friday, May 26th. And I got to say, Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven is one of the best albums of the last year. I'm still playing it over and over. Bunch of songs in my playlist. 
and it's available everywhere now. The album was hurled forth in 2022 during the band's 25th anniversary, and it sees this New Orleans powerhouse at the peak of their black and death metal form. Songs of war, religion, and complexities, including the dread of existence, will pummel, pummel your ears for 47 minutes of brutal bliss. But don't take my word for it. Watch and listen now at metalblade.com slash goat whore or wherever you get your audio fix. Big thanks to Metal Blade Records for sponsoring the Jossa Show and this year's Milwaukee Metal Fest. And make sure you come see Goat Whore on May 26th at the Rave in Milwaukee. While I have you, manscaped.com. Look at that. Look at that line right there that Brian has. That's 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 when the manscape gets you right like this. You just you just hit it. That's it, man. You just Doop, 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 doop. Like but Gomez what Adams. You, do that again. Doop, 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 doop. Someone's going to remix that clip. <laughs> so that's going to be a TikTok. Man, manscaped.com. Promo code Justice. Going to get you 20% off plus free shipping to get you all the beard care that you need. Trimmers, hedgers, nail clippers, beard bombs, shampoos, deodorants, lip bombs. See, but here's the thing. Don't put on the Manscaped lip balm. And then try to trim because you're going to have hair all up in your grill. You don't want that. You want to keep the lips dry so the hair just falls off. And then as soon as your mustache is nice and trim, then put on that Manscaped lip balm. You're on mute. But while you're saying that, manscaped.com, promo code JASTA for 20% off plus free shipping. I can't hear you. You're on mute. (laughs) Now back to the show. What about like... I know people are going to be like, Josta, all you do is talk about tours and packaging and business. But man, I mean, could you do Flotsam? Could you do like, what's the dream lineup that you guys would do if you could put it together right now? Oh, man, there's so many options. I mean, there's so many great bands, you know, and we have so many friends, you know, over the years. I mean, there's no way it's like picking your kids. You can't, you know, I mean, it, I'd love to play with Flotsam. I'd love to play with Metallica. I mean, all the way Overkill, Bubble. You know, it just it, yeah. it goes. You know, yeah, there's Flotsam, so much Exodus, Overkill, Testament, Anthrax, Death yeah. Angel. You know, yeah. all the all the OGs. You know what I mean? It would be it would be amazing because that's it's all that same generational thing going on. And mm-hmm. you know, like I said, a lot of a lot of younger fans never get to see a lot of those bands, and they're just seeing them now, which is totally amazing like you see that a lot in europe i know you i'm sure you see it too like mm-hmm. like the european crowd because i go over there a lot with the ross stuff and they're it's a whole different beast over there it's like you know you're you're meeting like late teen early 20s and they're like this is all brand new to them and it's like they they've it, it kind of jettisoned you back to when you discovered it and it's a nice feeling because it was great it was nothing better than when you were we were there while it was growing and it was like this whole it was just a, a movement you know it was a Being movement. part of it too you guys yeah. know you were in it you know but as a fan also it was like wow i'm like you hear this band you know i heard this band metal church on the radio it was like holy crap that's like metal church metal church it was like the most evil sounding crazy heavy thing i ever heard and the singer was out of it it was nuts you know (laughs) you never heard anything like it before you know so they don't have a lot of that now because everything that's new unfortunately so much new stuff it doesn't have it kind of like it's it's just kind of like stays at the same same level of things and they're it's it's kind of it it just loses something because of that. It's great players. There's so many great players out there, but they, it, it's a different spirit. It, a different, it had a different thing, I think, because there wasn't the technology and there wasn't the internet and there wasn't any of that stuff. So it was like super organic. And like I, it's almost like the old stuff breaks through, continues to break through uh, because either the nostalgia comes around or there's, there's, um, a collective consciousness of like the, the newer metal fans when they go down the rabbit hole and they, they look at the logos, they read the thanks list, kind of like how it, we all did too. Yeah. Um, but the playlisting, I, I, I think that kind of screws it up in a way too, where you'll get the algorithm will push you stuff that you might not necessarily like, but you, you mentioned Ross and I thought, man, I watched some of the set. What was it from hell's heroes? You just did. What was the one yeah. you just did? And I, I fast forward through because I, I was like, I got to find Kill with Power. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my hands down, my fate, one of my favorite songs oh, of all yes. time. 
Yep. But when I got to that, I was like, wow. I mean, you just fucking killed it. It ah, was just, thank it you. was. And so I would imagine that when you go, especially when you go to Europe, like those are the ones that get the pop oh, and that man. ridiculous. And, uh, yeah. and it, it's, you looking out in the crowd and there's people that are i mean what year did that come out but this is, then you're looking out in the crowd there's like kids that are 17 and 18 yeah. going to kill for hour die yeah. die and they're and you're like how old are you and there's like 15 year old <laughs> so they yeah. find it mm -hmm. yeah well, i think a lot of their stuff too a lot of the modern stuff i mean the older stuff that we're talking about it was done for the right reasons because there was it wasn't about money because we nobody none of us had record deals none of us even thought we could get record deals and when we started getting record deals it was like no way so it was made solely about music you know and that's kind of where we've come now with the way the new music business is there's no big money in it anymore you know i mean yeah metallica makes a bunch of money you know bands of that level make a bunch of money on the road but they're not even selling a lot of physical product anymore nobody it's a whole new game now so now when you're doing this you're doing it because you love music so a lot of that to me is gives it the right spirit and it does start organically, even though we're older now, but it's kind of, it's, it's completely going back again because it's a different, it's a different music business now. Yeah, what, that was like the one thing when we and Kurt started working was, it was like, I really was like, wanted to be authentic and organic as possible. You know, that was a, like, we must have had so many conversations about that. Absolutely. It was so important that we, we did it as it felt right, you know, and we did go through a bunch of stuff at first and it was mm -hmm. kind of like, well, it's cool, but, and I was like, well, but, and then, you know, mm -hmm. it shifted directions, you know what I mean? And, and exactly, it definitely, I think I feel that's why it shows through the new stuff. It's, 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 it's real. You know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's nothing phony about it. And even in the process of the recording, even with the technology, the one thing I remember, cause I did a lot of this myself too, like Kurt was just really like, all right, well, you know, we're going to do it, you know, old school, good, get it, get it right. You know, let's get it right, man. If we have the time, let's get it right and really make it as authentic as possible. And, you know, not a lot of cheating, you know what I mean? And, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it was really important, you know, and, and just, people think oh well does it really matter at the end well actually it does yeah, it because does. like that attitude and that feeling is there you know and uh i mean i i remember i heard i'm good friends with zeus by the way and he had told to me zeus. about the recording vocals process that you guys did on the last record and that was kind of part of the inspiration when he told me he was like yeah dude we were in there and it was just like totally raw and i was like yeah dude that's and you could feel that through the record and that's exactly. that's super important man you know well, that's exactly yeah. right. And that's kind of the thing, like, because I had written an album, gave it to Mike, and we had an album ready to go. So we were starting the process. And then what happened, happened. So when we decided to keep going, I had an album sitting there. And I gave them to Mark. And we went through them. And some of these, we saved some of them. And a lot of them, I wrote new stuff. Just because, like he was saying, it, it found a direction. And it found a sound and these songs didn't really apply anymore. Some did, but some of them didn't. So it was kind of, again, the step-by-step well, -step process of figuring out what's working and what's, you know, making you go eh, eh, for whatever reason, you know, whether it was him going, no, nah, I'm not feeling that, or I'm going, I'm not feeling that. Okay. Let's, let's find something that we're both feeling and make it happen that way. Yeah, again, this was not even thinking was... about record sales or anything. So. And this yeah. was after you did uh born of fire because what was that was that the last one in 2020 that you were on what are you talking like, about? oh me me yeah 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 we that would that was a long time ago so yeah it was, but that was the last time. record you did before this or you was there one in between that uh no that no record? no it, it then you know when the whole world shut down thing everybody i mean i did a couple of things here and there but i didn't do a record so that was the uh, the record the last record i've done until this one yeah Okay, so what was the? How different is the process? Is it a different, <laughs> tuning, is it a different tuning? It's a different recording uh, process, or you you are you not because no one was together, right? Like no one's right. in the same room. Yeah, but I mean, it, it was a whole different attitude. I mean, because would would the I think the one thing that's really strange about doing the other stuff was that you know it's not per se it's not man of war. 
So you have a guy from Man of War that started Man of War and we're doing his stuff. So it has kind of a, it was, you know, it was always kind of fine, try to find its own little direction and stuff. You know what I mean? Which was great. And, you know, there, there was, a, there's a lot of cool stuff that we did do. And that was, cool, you know, that was fun in itself. But we're doing this. I mean, now you're, now you're not just playing with Kurt from, you know, with, from Metal Church. You are in Metal Church. That's a whole different ball game. So now you have this legacy that you have with the band and this, you know, this massive amount of material that they have as a catalog. And my number one thing is, is like, all right, well, you know, you're not, you're not, you don't imitate. That was one thing we always said. We don't, you can't imitate because it was done to perfection the way it was. So why bother? Influence, absolutely, because there's a metal church type of sound. But what can we do to make it a new era, but still pay respect to the past and all these things? And for me, I really was attached to the first couple albums because David Wayne was a really big influence of mine. And uh, as much as I love the house stuff, it's, you know, it was a little bit different for me. Mm -hmm. So I really did gravitate towards those first two albums. And that's what's pretty prevalent in this. Uh, some of them, you know, it's heavy. But Kurt was very specific. We've got to keep them a lot, you know, a lot of the melodic, melodic elements of, of some of the stuff that we have done, and which was great. And, you know, because at first I was going home, I'm like, rah, 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 you know what I mean? Ah, you yeah. know, just like totally ton of bricks and, you know, beyond the black, let's go. And, and then it was like, you know, all right, well, here's this thing. And I was like, yeah, that's really cool. It was like more, a lot more grooving going on where like, you know, like a burial at sea type of things. And I was like, wow, okay, all right. I had to kind of pull it back and go, yeah, there is a thing going on here, you know? And I'm like, all right, wow, this is really cool. And it kind of let me stretch out a little bit more and sing a little bit more and try a couple of little things. So it was fun. I mean, we- It was a process. Yeah, exactly. we, we yeah. kept it within the parameters of what they do, but we, I felt like we we bumped it to the next place. You know what I mean? Exactly. Where I can feel comfortable doing it and s still pay respect and it's still Metal Church. But still make it yours. Put your right. stamp on it. You know, and that was really important. I Because I, I didn't want to do bring this guy in. Okay, here's how you're going to do this. Yeah. Well, I, here's, I just this think is what that, you do. It's like, no, that's why. I mean, Mark, Mark wrote the lyrics for this. I just like, you go. This is yeah, something new again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and lyrics, I, oh, that's like, great. Oh, melodies. Yeah. He said, go for it. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. And, you know, and then I'll work with you as a producer on melodies and where that works. But you need to put you into this. That's the only way it's going to be a really a new starting point for us, you know. No, that's cool. And I think for the for the for the real underground diehard metalheads, they know like if you can fucking go out there and slay kill with power, like you're going to just be able to shine on this, but I get what you're saying. It's almost like there wasn't a way for you to be the focal point there because it's Ross's thing. But now with this, you are getting that ability to not only co-write, but, but actually choose the topic or choose the message, which can be make or break the song. A, a lot of people will say, Oh, it's about the riff or it's about the melody, but sometimes it is about the words and the, about all and of the, it. Yeah. And the, and the message. And I'm very, too. very particular about that. That was, mm -hmm. that's why I was, I was so grateful. He was like, yeah, write, write it. I was like, oh, wow. You know, so that was a big th thinking process, which we had a lot of discussions about because mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I, I never like, I like to write ambiguously. You know what I mean? You don't, you know, not, not too direct. There are a couple of things that are a little bit direct, but I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is. And it's metal. It's supposed to be rebellious. You know what I mean? anti-establishment type of thing you know it's like i'm not into following the norm and being correct right, yeah. <laughs> what good is that right <laughs> exactly well and, and speaking of which you know when when everything did go down there was there were there was some pushback to the statement and now you're being kind of um, what's the term i guess uh vindicated in a way i know you deleted the statement but if you, I don't know how much you want to go into that, and you don't have to. We can, we can skip that. But it, you know, I always thought, know. wow, we knew, we knew. Yeah, I always we thought knew. metal is supposed to be anti-official narrative. Exactly. But so I was like, wow, respect to Metal Church. But I did understand also, like, look, you got to play the game, and you got to well, wait. Well, to the point, to the point. But the the, the comment 
when we made the initial comment, people misunderstood it. We weren't talking directly about that, even though we could stand behind our original statement about that. It wasn't about that. It was about other aspects of big pharma, you know, and things like that, that we were talking about. But we wanted to clarify that this is not what we're talking about, even though, you know, we could have went down that that particular path and stood behind it as a band, you know, completely. But now let's let's not ask for trouble. You know, I mean, we'll we'll create our own at the right time, you know. And, yeah. And, no, and, I'll stand and, by and read the lyrics on the record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. yeah. You know, and if you want to challenge us, go ahead. We'll kick your ass. You know, yes. and that's that's fine. But yeah. we'll wait. You know, what, what's from the movie is like, be nice until it's time to not be nice. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yep. <laughs> but, but I think a lot of people who might have been afraid to speak up have been in a similar situation. And I've wondered, you know, was there a misdiagnosis or was there a side effect or was there other things that led to certain things? And it's it's so crazy that now we're living in a time where even to just question that, like, let's look at like, let's look at this. Oh, let's and let's look at this, you know, not only from a scientific and a medical standpoint, but we're going by actual literature. We're going by actual and these aren't these aren't the C words. These are real studies published by quote unquote respect to people, but you can't have it both ways. And so when you bring that to, to certain types who are like, Nope, I got this news. This is on. The way it is. And if you, yeah. and if you don't agree, you're a terrorist. Yeah. Right. But, if you, but if you look, but if you look in the own, in their own paperwork, may yeah. cause homicidal thoughts, may cause suicidal thoughts, may cause anal bleeding. I'm not, and I don't want to like joke around, but, <laughs> Right. Well, but no, you're absolutely right. And we kind of, you know, we know where we're at as a band. We know where we're at with all that stuff. And we're all, you know, we're all of one mind on that. And that's great. And that's one thing that's important. But at the same time, we don't want to wear it on our sleeve because we don't want to make it because it's so divisive right now, all that kind of stuff, you know, and we don't want to, we don't want it to interfere with the music. You know, we have our things like everybody does, but we want it to be about music and having bringing people together as much as possible, you know, and, you know, let's not, I'm not going to buy into the the manufactured division. I'm just not doing that, you know, and we don't want to do that. We want to make music. We want people to have a good time. We want to have a good time and make the best music we can and reach as many people as we can. So that's, that's job one, you know, so all the other stuff is, is, is fine and dandy, but it's also on the periphery of it, you know, and, you know, and that's where we kind of stand. As someone who, deals with you know uh, mental disorders i've been dealing with depression my whole life and you know so when that happens i definitely felt you know because i've been close real close to that scenario myself um you know i used to drink a lot and i've been sober now for seven years and that was never you know no good decision ever came from that (laughs) and um you know so so yeah you know i mean i think you know medicine and all that stuff it 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 works you know in it it, but you also have to work with it you know and you got to be you know it's a tough one it's a tough one kevin you know it could be a misdiagnosis could be a number of things and you know i'm a big interactions yeah interaction with another thing yeah and people but but also you know yeah because the greater, I think the greater conversation, you can look at what happened with Morbid Angel and their show, and my heart goes out to all the victims. The greater conversation is about the overall healthcare system. And yeah. it blows my mind that like these, these poor people just trying to enjoy a metal show, get a fucking roof falling on them. And now they need GoFundMes <laughs> because of the system. And so by Metal Church even putting out that initial statement, it it's not just about antidepressants or just about right. um, anything. It's, it's, it's overall a, a topic that does need to brought, be brought up. And I, and I commend you guys because it it's, that's just the first little step. And once people are able to do that and then more people follow Sue, it, it's a, it becomes a more nuanced conversation. Right. And that's not new for us. I mean, if you look that look fake healer, Yep. There you go. You are already on to that. And the yeah. thing is, is that, you know, we we should not be at a time where you can't ask a question. 
I mean, I'm the, number, the number one thing when we were, when I was in school or back in the day was you ask a question to be more knowledgeable. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, I don't understand this. So can you please explain this or do or what, what, what's this? It's like, you're not stupid. No question is stupid. You know what I mean? It's no like, stupid questions. If you should ask the question no matter and, what. And, and, and it's more, you do more to honor people like Mike Howe by bringing up these questions and being right. more proactive than reactive. I mean, we, we dealt with it with Trevor from the black diet where we go, what could we have done different? And we kick ourselves every day going, what could we have done different? But at some point you do have to look at the doctors and at the side effects and at the interactions and at the healthcare system. But just to, just to get that going, it's like, it's a hard conversation to start. And then mm -hmm. you have to deal with all the, 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 I don't want to call them big pharma fanboys, but there's some people out there that really are like, I mean, I dealt with it just even on my Patreon. I had someone cancel on my Patreon. We have a new song called Suicidality on the new Jost album. And it's, and they, they were like, you know, these, these antidepressants saved my life. Um, well, sometimes they work. Yeah, they work yeah. for me, but I, but sometimes that, they that don't. A yeah. million years to make, find something that actually worked. You know what I mean? But I mean, it, I like the, like I have a really, I have a great doctor because she was like, it's, not the cure you have to work with it you know so i mean but but that's not for everybody for all yeah. i know it could be a placebo who the fuck knows but all i know is it works and it doesn't mess me up and that's cool but again this it it, it depends you know what i mean but again yeah i asked a lots of questions yep the, you know, and yeah, i knew the, that if it's something that having this go right, binary like, thing out of here you know right the, it's a more nuanced conversation where it's like you're not you're not just blanket statements saying, hey, get off everything cold turkey. And and no, you're saying, mm -hmm. why don't we look into this? But even that is hard because it's like you you have to reframe your entire existence. And I I've been I've been deep on this uh, on this like natural homeopathic healing right. kick lately. And even that you get people like they look at you like you're crazy, like. I'm taking vitamin D. I'm taking zinc. I'm taking magnesium. I'm feeling great. What is all that? Well, you're wasting all this money on vitamins and all that stuff. But like, but if I feel good and I'm seeing a result, exactly, is that better than the slash burn cut radiate Medicaid? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that that even in itself has become like a taboo thing. Like, are we going to revisit Medicaid radiate slash cut? burn or we're not going to or we're not going to have any advancements no no but i got this i got this phone that can see across the world <laughs> right mm -hmm. but not with that yeah yeah exactly right. and it, it, you know and i mean hey if anything in the last three years you know there's definitely room for asking a lot of questions hey, man. Stuff yeah. when it comes to any kind of medication or anything like that you know because yeah. you know as as we see without getting into detail the results of it you know so. exactly yeah we'll have to do a part two once the record is out and we'll have to go through the topics and some Ooh. of the stuff that that gets addressed because that to Ooh. me is the most compelling part of metal i still go and I read the lyrics i still want to go and okay. read the interviews or listen to the shows and and hear about the topics but what what was some of the stuff that you wanted to express on the record and was there anything um, was there any topics like that were really meaningful that you were like, this is one I have to try to address on this? Uh, uh, well, I mean, there's definitely, there's one song, you know, about, uh, you know, the gun rights and all that stuff, because I remember writing that one because I was so pissed off at like what I had heard that day. And I'm like, that's just nonsense. So it's, it's kind of almost a, a big F you to that whole concept of, you know, not being able to protect yourself and all that stuff. And which I feel is very important, especially now, mm -hmm. you know, if the bad guys yeah. got a bigger gun than you, you know, it's like, well, what am I going to, you know, bring a stick to a, to a gunfight pretty much. And then, you know, a lot of the, most of the other stuff is just really about anti-establishment and going against, you know, the narrative and being able to 
you know, have the right to have your own damn thought. You know, it's like, it's really about individuality. And I'm my, my, my favorite, my favorite concept is like, there's, I don't have a political party and I don't have a religion. My, my concept is common sense and just be cool with each other. Don't be a piece of shit person. I mean, it's really that simple. That's how I looked at it with this, you know, and, you know, and that that's basically what most of the record is about, you know, and, and, and just that, and you can interpret it in any way you want it, but it's definitely there and saying, Hey, you know, if I want to think this or believe in that, and I'm not bothering, I'm not pushing it on you. And I'm just, it's my thing. Then why can't I do it? You know what I mean? I'm not like, you know, I'm not bothering or offending or doing anything to anybody. It's within my own self. And I feel like I'm contributing to the, to the world and to society as a, as a, as a person. And, um, I, you know, that's really as simple as it should be. It should matter about race, religion, politics, all that stuff is human nonsense for, for division. You know, they yeah. want this division. They don't want us to be together, you know, exactly. and because they don't have any power in us being together. It's exactly you know, right. And, 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 and that's why we're the congregation of annihilation. Yes. You know, exactly. Cause, cause that's, that's what it means. We're not doing that. Yeah. Yep. Have yep. you thought about like relocating the band to like New Hampshire or like, <laughs> anyway, like have you thought like, cause I, I, you know, I talked to so many musicians there, they're, they're happy doing what they're doing. And they'll, they'll say to me like, well, you live in Connecticut. It's some of the craziest fucking laws in the country. And, and obviously we're all bound to our families to a certain yes. extent or, and yep. we, or, or our social, social circles. But, you know, knowing Phil, like people like Phil Labonte and other musicians who move to states, like move, I'm moving to Texas or I'm moving yep. to New Hampshire. Yep. A lot of Massachusetts yeah, man. Uh, band members moved to New Hampshire yep. and they got a, and they got a compound and you don't, you don't want to <laughs> trespass. Yeah, that's you right. I mean? <laughs> you don't want to go past the barbed wire. If you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I'm going to go to Tennessee and live in the backwoods on our freaking lake and have like a, you know, a 30 acre perimeter. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, yeah. I just wonder why a lot more musicians aren't currently doing that, especially when there are um, so many tax breaks and so many easier laws. And when, well, when I say, way. are you? Yeah. Well, oh, when, yes. I say, <laughs> when I say easier laws, I just mean like you're a law abiding citizen. You're a good person. You want to defend yourself. You want to defend your family. You don't want to have to jump through all these hoops mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to, prove all this stuff that you don't need to prove and, and fill out all this paperwork and pay all these stupid fees. But even in just talking about that, um, you, 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 you strike a nerve with people because they are so indoctrinated by, with fear and, and, and with all this stuff that they go, well, no, no, this is what we have to do this because there are these other bad people that are, that are fucking it up. And so when we get into the conversation of the, they and the, them and the, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be generalizing, right? Like I, I think you can, you can narrow it down. Right. And you can say, okay, at the top and they go, well, who's they at the top? And we're like, well, it's lawmakers, it's bankers, it's, um, powerful corporations it's not it goes even above that too yes yes mm -hmm. yeah. and and then they're like oh i don't know that sounds like some you know tinfoil hat stuff and it's like but it's not it's proven yeah, it's yeah. it's factual yes. just because because you're taught one thing i think growing up and i mean i especially i remember um pre 9-11 it, it, you can't even explain what it was like pre 9-11 right? like you're 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 a good person. You're not going to, you're not putting anything into your shoe. You're not going to blow up a pain. And I don't really think anybody was gonna. No, I think most people are good, yeah. but there's, there's things that happen. Right. And they're not, say, All right, they're yeah, not, they there's a lot of weird shit going on here. Right. But the it, thing is, if, if you dig into all this stuff, if you do take the time to dig into it, this stuff, regardless of what side of anything you're on, if you dig into it and you have the ability to connect dots, you can find out and you can figure it out. Yeah. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't have time and that's nothing yeah. against them. They don't. And that's by design. So that's where I think where we come in and artists and music and movies and anybody in the arts, you want to get away from that. You know, as like Mark saying from him writing and singing, he's got to sing from the heart and it's got to be what what it means something to him. 
but he like he does it in such a way that it can be inter- it's done in an artistic way. It's not here's the deal, boom, hit right. me over the head with it. Right. You know, it's 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 written subtly, it's creative, you know, but he's getting his saying what he needs to say, you know, and that's really important, regardless of of all, you know, the especially now cancel culture and things like this, you know, and all this kind of stuff is like just nonsense, you know. I mean, be creative. That's the whole point. You know, right? How do we how do we not piss out like the the boomers did? Like how do we not become the next boomers? Because I asked my father about this last night. I said, you we were talking as he gets older, he'll, he'll get more into the Vietnam. Um, you know, we were told as kids, like, we don't talk about it. You know, we go mm-hmm. to the, v- yeah, I, to the, I went through that too. Yeah. You know, and, and we would go to the VA and, and visit him and he had his, tr- his trials and tribulations, which I'm so thankful and grateful that he made it through. But even yesterday, uh, he was sent this thing about agent orange and you know, they, the VA sends it out and it's for family members. Like, you know, so that we could look into our health and my mm-hmm. kids can look into their health because of this, lo- they're, the Agent yeah. Orange is going to affect like four, five, six generations of people. Yep. Um, and when you've been personally poisoned and your family and your genetics have been poisoned by uh, a company that knew they were and a government that knew it was poisoning its citizens and it's people who are supposedly fighting for the con- for the country. We don't want to go down, you know, the whole go- Gulf. We don't have time to go down the whole Gulf of Tonkin. Right. But like you said. You know, to go look into it. Look into the Gulf of Tonkin. Look into why young people were sent to kill other young people. <laughs> and and I go to my mother. I said, "What happened? Like you guys were anti-war. You saw this happen. Like why? Because you get caught up in this other system. I got to just get through the day. I got to pay my bills. I got to." Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and then all of a sudden, you 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 don't have the ability to really focus on. Um, creating some sort of counterculture or continued counterculture that goes against the norm. And if you do, you're ostracized for it. But yeah, yeah I, I guess that's a long, I'm sorry. Yeah, a long that's, that's, a huge, yeah. that's a huge question. But for yeah. me, in, in, as, as an artist, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to speak for Mark, but I think, I think it's really important that you stand up for what you believe in. Mm-hmm. No matter, you know, you stand up for it. If you honestly believe it, you know, and, and you, you know, you at least have done somewhat research into whatever it is, you know, be it, well, whatever, you know, that's how you, you, you stand for yourself. You stand for something, you know, and, and you, you back it up. You know, you don't just kind of go, you're not a sheep. Don't be sheep. Yeah. You're not you a know. poser, man. You know, yeah, like, exactly. you got to stand by what you say. You yeah. Know? I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to moralize you for doing point. this though. You know? Yeah, they well, they only do. They can only do that too if you let them, you know. But do you? But do you think that the more people are? I I don't know what. Maybe Brian knows the term. I think some people say it's black pilled. You know, just more the uh, the yeah. more more hopelessness. Like more like yes, we're never gonna beat this system. What is it? Is is that the one? <laughs> you nailed it, yeah, Jamie. Black pilled. Yeah, yeah black pilled. Like, yeah. Like and yeah. then what's the one where you're you're hopeful, but people look at you as you're kind of like naive. Red pilled. Okay. Yeah, Michael Malice just put out a book called The White Pill as well. Which oh, that's a that's a new hopeful. Pill. That's a good one. A hopeful and, uh, pill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just so the red one's the awakening the pill. Hey, everybody! It's Jamie reminding you today's episode is brought to you by our Milwaukee Metal Fest sponsor, and they have their own stage, the IndieMerchStore.com stage, and they have a ton of restocks and a ton of pre-orders going on right now over at IndieMerchStore.com. So when you go to Milwaukee Metal Fest, you're going to go right over to the Indie Merch Store booth with your shirt that you've purchased from IndieMerchStore.com before you go to the show when you use the code JOSTA10. That's right, IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10. Go to their booth at Milwaukee Metal Fest this Memorial Day weekend. Tell them JOSTA sent you. And pick up say the new cattle decapitation or the new thy artist murder or any of their great releases and or any of their great merchandise or accessories you know them you love them indiemerchstore.com promo code josta 10 link is always in the show notes while i have you make sure you also check out monarchheavy.com that's m-n-r-k h-e-a-v-y.com and come to milwaukee metal fest and see 
their latest powerhouse, Somnuri, who have a new album coming out called Desiderium. And you can get it at monarchheavy.com and save yourself 15% when you use the promo code 666 at monarchheavy.com. You'll see they have three for 60 shirts. Right now they have a yellow LP for pre-order and a Coke bottle color LP for pre-order. Somnuri Desiderium plus new Creeping Death on the way as well, which you can pre-order over there and fingers crossed we'll get creeping death on the Milwaukee metal fest 2024 monarchheavy.com promo code 666 now back to the show right because okay because when we were kids and we and i know i've people are like oh god now he's going to talk about yale or whatever but we yeah. you know we, we live near yale and you saw like okay these people they get treated much differently by law enforcement by the local community yeah. and and you see oh wow there really are such things it's it's real there's really are such things as powerful families yeah uh, the money goes back hundreds and hundreds of years generational wealth and so you know when they go who's they it's like well these are the people that sent the young people like my father to. Yeah, mine too. Vietnam. My father, 18 years old, Vietnam. You know, I was yeah, about my, my dad was World War II. Yeah, you know, I was and, about 30 when my father finally, like, we both got drunk one night, wild, right? I'm drinking with my dad, and he finally let it let everything go about the stuff. And I, I don't think I was ever the same after that because I no, couldn't no. believe the things that an 18 year old kid had to go and do in the name of his country, which was bullshit anyway. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you talk about, you know, standing up for what I believe in absolutely. fucking lutely you know, yeah. like you, you have an, you have an in your family, same thing here, you know, and you're not, that's not a conspiracy the theory. Yeah. That's yeah. not a conspiracy. Not a, that's not a, and, and, and he said to me like early on, he said to me like, you're never gonna you're never gonna go down to the recruitment office you're never that's what gonna. my dad said to me too he says you will never volunteer mm -hmm. you, yeah. i went through it you will never do that yep. and i and i was yeah. i was crushed and i i had i had problems with my hand anyway so they were like you know they won't take you because of your hand but and i was crushed i was devastated because i wanted to be like my gramp and my grandfather but then when I saw the PTSD and, 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 you know, he would look through us, the flashbacks, you know, the late at night, you know, running outside, they're here, you know, you know, hide, you know, run, you know, get them, whatever. And, and I go, this is, this is not a victimless thing. So now when I see all these people are like, yeah, we're going to world war three, we're going, let's, let's send all this money over to, I'm like, oh. Oh God! Don't even go. Don't go there. <laughs> other, other than that, Jackie, how was the parade? Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, oh boy. But I yeah. think I think that it's it's got to be normalized to have this conversation again. Otherwise, you end up like the boomers, where it was yes. like okay, but okay, I'm not taking any any credit from them because there was a little bit of time in between wars. But I am also old enough to remember like my sisters class and a little older like some of those guys having to go to the gulf war and so that was like a yeah. trip that was yep. a trip for me you know being on the early oz fest and guys guys you know coming back um or guys going like other guys are yeah. coming back and other guys are going oh i'm going to afghanistan to yep. fight because they they you know we don't we don't have to get into yeah, I mean, seven, I know a ton but of. But I would love, I would love to get Metal oh, Church God. Oh. Building Seven, <laughs> the special three-hour show. <laughs> Boy, I just bought a new roll of aluminum foil too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I started watching. Uh, Big hat. Yeah, I, I, I started watching it's the sombrero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the airplane number five that came out on Hulu. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but I, oh, I heard, I just saw that the other day. Oh, the ad for it. is it good? I, I started watching it. It's okay. I'm not. Well, I'm it's Hulu like, doing it. So, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to question that. Right. You know, I'm only 10 minutes in. Brian, is this not going to be able to go on, on YouTube? Are we going to have to get like, uh, what's the other? Are we going to have to get a rumble page for this episode? What is it? <laughs> I mean, having a rumble page wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt us. But, oh, uh, we could go nuts no, we'll on that. Fine. I Maybe we will. Will this be the first episode we put up on rumble? <laughs> I'll put this up. Just to get people all real up, real fired up. Oh, that'd be but, great. Yeah. But no, I, I think. It, <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. I don't care, man. That's the spirit. <laughs> no, I think it's something that needs to be talked about more because I really worry. Like, I worry about these kids. Like, my nephews are 17 and 18. Like, I don't want them to go into fucking Ukraine. 
Like, put them to work here. There's plenty of shit. There's plenty of problems we can fix here. Dude, we get well, too much shit going on here to worry about that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Sorry. No no offense to anybody, but that's just how it is, dude. You know, yeah. I'd freak that. We got enough shit here. Hey, I'm in L.A. right now. Do I need say more? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah talk about a, a failed uh mental health and medical system True. True. right there but there's got to be a reason why why do they allow it why are a hundred thousand people without victim blaming like let's it's it's a fucking it's the walking dead here you know what i mean they they, mm-hmm. they just they have they control everything by having this constant chaos you know what I mean? During at this. Yeah. yeah. If, if when our parents get to be a certain age, right. And I saw my father deal with this with his grandfather. They, he, with, with my grandfather, with his father, like that part of the thing was he just wanted to go in his house. Same with my grandmother, like a, the house that, you know, they build that they grew up and built, you know, uh, raised their families. in. you think these people must have families. They must. Like, yeah. Were, were, were they, were they that bad off? I say, I say that, that to myself too. Yeah. Like I was walking by a dude yesterday. I was on a walk and I saw this dude and, and like, you know, you could tell he had mental health issues. He was talking to himself and all this stuff. And it wasn't like the drug addict fucking, I don't, you know, type of homelessness thing. It was the real mental illness thing. And I just was like, why is this person here? Why are they alone here? And I don't understand where we have, we can send billions of dollars to everywhere else, but this poor guy can't get any help whatsoever. And it's like, oh, well, they don't want, no, no, no. That that dude doesn't even really know. It's like, you know, I don't know the guy, obviously, but I'm just saying it was like, why can't we at least look into helping these people? Because they obviously need it. So what is there no money in it? Like, or is there no, there is no money in it. Cause they're not contributing to the freaking big bank of the society that we live in. You know, we're all just assets to the company. You know what I mean? Let's be honest. You know? They want to breed chaos. They want yeah. instability and chaos, yeah. you know, and that's, and they use them. I mean, they're just unfortunately using, creating them, you know? See, right. We, we hit on two topics that like you wouldn't be able to categorize politically. Like you could say like the gun thing on, on the record is like a right leaning kind of topic. But then if you say about, but if you say about like helping, um, you know, people with their mental illness or helping homeless people, that's more of like a left leaning kind of, kind of topic. So, so the whole label thing, it makes no sense because there's more commonality. Um, we're a and, lot all no matter your re- left or right Republican Democrat however you want to classify it at the end of the day we all want the same things you know oh, there's a lot of commonality yeah like living know, but, but they don't but they don't want you to know that right right because, because we're then, stronger in numbers and that's the one thing that no that nobody in the don't forget there's about this many of them compared to a, this many of us so if this many of us started to think that one common thing this many people wouldn't exist I always was fascinated. How could like a hundred people control millions? Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. You know? And it's not new. Yeah. Been going on forever. And I got my big tinfoil hat on ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) But no, it's just common sense. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't, I don't belong to any party. I don't care about that stuff because they both suck. (laughs) You know what I mean? But Mm. so it's just, it's about being a human, being a good person, not being a piece of shit. You know what I'm mean? just being, being good to each other. You know what I mean? What's the fuck? It's using your head. That, you know, it's using your head. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't take my shit. I won't take your shit. Do you need something? Let me help you. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, what happened to that? You know what I mean? It's like everybody's just. We live in such a society where it's like me, 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 me. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, I'm I'm cool. You know, whatever. And like my dinner. Everybody picture. forgot about that yeah. that thing. You know that makes us us. You know. Or, or could also, I was thinking, could the homeless be like collateral damage of some other thing and some well, other certain, thing certain degree of that is possible. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, do you see that, it in Arizona? Are you still in Arizona? Thing. Who, me? No, uh, Kurt. What's that? Are you still in Arizona? No, I'm in Southern California. Okay. So it's, it. but it's, I moved here from Washington. Oh, you were in Washington. Yeah. Uh, why did I think you were in Arizona for a bit? 
So, so in Washington, though, it was kind of similar to Southern California with oh, very yeah the homelessness yeah. and with but it's you a, could go you can go and be a live and let live out in the wilderness in in Washington, right? But not everyone can do that. Mm-hmm. No, where exactly. where are you, Mark? I'm well right now. Well, I'm I'm in New Bedford, Mass, but I also have in in L.A. But Marina Del Rey, so it's you know a little outside the city. So, but yeah, yeah. I'm a couple, I'm a couple hours out of L.A. Okay. So you're you see it, but not as bad as in L.A. Where it's oh, like, no, out here, out here, it's, it's you, you wouldn't even know. It's just I'm, I came move here for the weather. I couldn't uh-huh. do the weather in Washington anymore. I just so I moved here. But, yeah, it, it's nothing like L.A. here. Yeah, we get yeah. a little bit over here once in a while to get some of that, but definitely not like downtown or anything like that. Hollywood. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and, and people go, well, yo, why do you care? You're like, some guy wrote me the other day. Why do you care? You're such a bleeding heart liberal. And isn't that, and I'm thinking, well, it's, it's, y- y- there's people suffering and they're literally like, I've seen it since the pandemic. Like there was, there's more and more people on every corner with a sign or nodding out or fucking, uh, I don't know what the, what is the, what is it, Brian, but they take and you could kill it. The, 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 the fentanyl. The, Fentanyl. Yes. Yeah. The, there, there was a, there's been a bunch of ODs and a bunch of people. And I go, this is this, it can't be on accident. No, it's not. They're not letting this it in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it, it's none of this is organic. Yeah. Cause, yeah. I mean, if on. you don't believe me now, just wait. Yeah. I mean, to, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's yeah. not organic. You know? Yeah. I mean, but to yeah, mobilize. And to 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 have these conversations and then to mobilize and then to take any sort of positive action, you need everybody. You can't be divided yes. politically. You can't right. be like, you know, I saw something the other day about like, oh, we're, it's there's talk about civil war. I'm like, really? Never be a civil like war this? Here. No, it, like it this, would never happen because there's too much division. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what they're doing. I mean, how, what are you going to have a civil war for? How yeah. would you do that? What are you going right. to try to make it so that it's a right and a left? Mm-hmm. And then like, and like, that's dumb, you know, because, yeah. because in all actuality, the amount of people that are super either way, it's so small to the people that are, a lot of people like myself who are just common sensors in the middle, looking at everything going, none of this makes any sense. And there's right, a lot right. more of that than anything. So where's the civil war? But there's you, more of us than there you are. Know, it's like a schoolyard yeah. fight, really. You guys over there and you guys over here. And yeah, we're well, all that's just what I, watch. that's what I thought. So if, if there was chaos, they, the powers that be, especially the higher ups in all these major corporations and the higher ups in the political system, do they have enough security? Like, what are they going to do? They, would they like bar, would they put a wall around Beverly Hills? Would they put a wall around Greenwich? Like, what, but so, that's, but, why so they, that's why they control the narrative in the media and the tech and all that stuff. That's yeah, the easiest exactly. way to do it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's it's again, it's self evident. You know yeah, because I, mean? I, I, it makes me want to go research like the the original Civil War and really research into that because I always think if there was going to be some sort of conflict and we don't have to get into it too much, I always think like, well, then who would those who would those troops be? It wouldn't be American troops; it would be like NATO troops. Yeah, and what's oh boy, you're really going down. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get back to the music thing because this, go, ah, this is gonna go south. We, we could edit, we could edit all this out. I just love <laughs> I just love that you guys are down for this because I listen, it's we could talk about albums and writing songs. I love all that, but you really you I I know that your thinking is not in line with the official narrative, and I respect that. All. So um, Brian, let, we could get Brian in here. He, <laughs> do, we have, that do we do we have to get uh like do we have to do an extra? How long can we keep you guys? Can we keep you another? I'm, I'm good. Ten minutes <laughs> and we can, can roll, we, dude. We have we, another what half hour until our next thing. I think. Okay, well, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Yeah, I got we, about another ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, so for yeah. this ten minutes, maybe we could just have the, We'll edit it here. And this will just be for the Patreon, um, but yeah, I can clip that. Can you? Okay. Yeah. So for the last, because the more I meet people and I speak with people who are willing to question the events in the world and what's happening and and how and they just want and, and the only reason why they're doing this is so that their kids and their grandkids and everybody can have a better life and and have a, a fair shake. 
and not be under someone else's boot or not be sent somewhere they don't want to go mm-hmm. or told to live a certain way that is against their and these are good people most people are good people they're not mm-hmm. they're not looking to do shit that's going to burden others mm-hmm. um but just in that in that line of thinking you're met with so much opposition of like no fall in line just get through your day i can't worry about this i got and i think well why is that well because the reality of it what i learned when i woke up is not woke when i woke up is um because when you wake up to how much we've been lied to about everything everything literally everything that's a rough pill to swallow Mm -hmm. and it takes a long time to sort it out you know and you have to find ways to get through that and keep and don't take if you don't want to take the black pill and just give up you know and you try to navigate your way through the world now with everything that's been going on and realize it's been going on for an awfully long time and now it's just coming to light you know it's tough you know, and some people can't deal with it, you know, and it, it, it's a tough thing to realize that, you know, and, and find your own way through it, regardless of, you know, of, of, of again, it has nothing to do with right, left, set, any of that. It has nothing to do with politics. It's just, again, we all want the same things. We all want to be happy. We all want to be prosperous. We all want to be healthy. You know, we all want our kids to be that way and, you know, everybody to be, be that way. But when you're told that's not happening, you know, you, it's really tough to realize that and to swallow that pill. Yeah. Like I, I think for me, the, 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 over the last couple of years, I think like the thing that always agitated me the most would, and is that you realize that the only way to really get ahead is to within the system. And this is going to sound horrible, but it's the only way to get ahead is to, to, to go against it cheat so to say or you know do the opposite of what they're telling you like you know all these people that are inside trading though i made 12 million dollars today because i knew so they cheated if it was me and you and we did that we'd be in fucking jail well that's not right yeah. how come i, I want to make that 12 million dollars too i should have the right to make that 12 million dollars just like you what makes you better than me you know what i mean so you know so I, what my thinking lately is like all right how am i gonna how do you work within a corrupt system and still end up on top and you know, try not to be that. corrupt yourself? Yeah, well, and, but, but I always look at it. It's like, I remember I was, I was with, with a finance dude the other day and I'm like, all right, so how do we fuck the system to get rich? <laughs> and he looked at me, I'm like, dude, you're not rich because you did it right. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know, you didn't do it because you did it right. You know how to fuck the system just like every other fucking person does. They fuck the system. And there's loopholes for a reason. And if you know the loopholes, then you can fucking do it. And you if I the system. something that offends somebody, then you're an idiot because that's how it's done. That is you how you play it's the system. And it's all and, and now right. it's now coming out too that all these people who scammed the system. Some are going to get prosecuted, but it's not the ones that there, there's just going to be sacrificial it's lambs. Ignorant. Yeah, there's the, and you're seeing it like the, there was a there was a whole mask scam where a guy made like six million. I think he's in Michigan. I just read about it this morning and and they're prosecuting him and you look him up. He's not from a rich family. He was just doing what all these other people were doing, but he got caught and now he'll be made example of. And, it, and it's it's disheartening to an extent. But the other thing is like, OK, if you're going to be empowered by this and obviously our lane is music, our lane is is mm-hmm. touring and, and um, you don't want to alienate your audience. Right. You right. don't want to you, you want to gently kind of shake them from their slumber where you can. And not not everybody wants to join you on that path. Right. Um, I, I do wonder, is music that medium uh, to 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 enlighten people absolutely or, what it did in the 60s. so you know look at what it did in the 60s i mean it was the megaphone it was the it it created the whole thing you know but and once so, certain yeah, voices it's, were silenced which right. is happening now right um mm-hmm. 
it loses momentum, right? Uh, well, because the powers that be have to keep the sheep in line and keep the narrative. And so anybody that steps out of that lane, you know, you're, you're going to get hit, you know? Yeah. I mean, at this point, I think, <laughs> yeah, um, I don't care. I'll say, I'm going to say this out loud when I'm walking down the street today and I see somebody walking down the street or in their car alone with a mask on. I'm sorry, but you got a big <laughs> sign on your head that says I am a fucking idiot. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a fucking fact, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's pretty much sums it up. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. You do what you want. And you could cool. cite the Yale it. study. Like you could bring them. I have the I have it printed out. I have the Yale study right. printed out. Well, it's and common then, knowledge and, now that they and, didn't work. Oh, we didn't know. Sorry. Well, but it's you know. I've been I, and I and people will go, but you were critical of Yale, but this is not the same staff. It's not the same area. Same mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's this is actually an area where they were really well thought out and were it's part of the same overall arch overarching system. Mm-hmm. But um, when it's inconclusive like that, and I know you can't, you literally you can never. That's the whole thing about the study is that you can never recreate every quote unquote contagious interaction. Exactly. Um, of course. And I, I had a feeling that we were kind of being like duped when uh, after like the third tour and I did every meet and greet and like literally people who had it were like coughing on my face and I didn't get it. <laughs> and, and, and by, but then I saw how vehemently opposed uh, people were about even talking about it that I was like, you know what, let me just lay in the cut for a minute because at the end of the day, I still need to be um, bring having different revenue streams and bringing in enough so that I can do my part right. to maybe enlighten somebody down the line without crashing and burning over something I have no control over yet. It's, uh-huh. it's like now I think we have, it's almost like now we have more of a chance to, um, it, it, not that hindsight's 2020, but in a way it's like some things are getting proven now where you go, please. Truth, truth always wins out. Can, and, and you just say kindly, like, please look yeah. at this. I've had yeah. to say to multiple people, like, look at the, re- if you don't want to read the whole study, just, just, just read these parts. All right. It's inconclusive. You don't, you don't have to live your life like this. You don't have to be driving in a car. Yeah. With a and again, I mean, the way I Hello? say it, obviously, it's exaggerated, but I mean, it's just that, you know, I probably just, oh, there goes those record sales. Sorry, but we might have just attracted more on the other side. But it, but the, the, but the thing is true. And, 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 and again, that what I just said, my that's my personal opinion. It is not based on any religion, political party, and nothing. It's just common fucking sense of the of what you're talking about, these things. And I'm like, you know, I go. What about, what about I, a you, place by me? I won't say where because they don't they don't want the heat. But what about a place by me the other day where someone was walking in and they said, no, 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 we don't allow masks. We, they're like, they were like, you can't come in. I was like, we've gone. We've inverted. We're back. I was like. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense either because if that? somebody wants to wear one for uh, maybe another reason, you know. Well, that's different. You know, well, well but, but that blew, but that that blew my mind. Do. But yeah. see, that's what, but see, that's what not having the nuanced conversation leads to. Cause right. Cause everybody kind of meets on the, the further one way you go, you're always going to meet in the center. So right. it, it just made me kind of laugh. Like, wow, this guy thinks that people are going to rob his place. That? If they're in there wearing a mask. Well, see, there point, you go. Yeah. See, now there's, there's, a, there's an aspect to that, which like maybe nobody thought about that. Yeah. You know, maybe the guy driving in his car is afraid someone, you know, he's going to go steal somebody else's car. You know, right. we don't know. But the thing is, it's like, do your thing. Just don't hurt anybody else in the process. Don't tell anybody else how to live their life, you know. Right. Exactly. That's the yeah. whole point. You know yeah. what I mean? But, you know, everybody, with the way things, I mean, I, come on, we all have seen the worst in people in the last two, three years. I mean, some of the, some mm-hmm. of the stuff that I've seen, I'm like, Every day now, even still, my mind explodes by the absurdity of the things that are going on. I'm like, how can I just personally can't even fucking fathom waking up even remotely thinking or doing some of the stuff that I see going on. I'm like, what what planet are you from? I don't. 
get clowns. Clowns. We're, we're living you know? in an inversion. It's like an inversion. It's like an inverted reality. It's but you know what? At the end of the day, I and then knock on wood, and we'll leave and we'll leave it here. Um, I'm just I'm so happy for people like you guys and that are out. Your your music is gonna make people happy. Metal church coming to their town is gonna make people happy. Fucking even are you gonna go you're still gonna do stuff with Ross, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, so kill with power. You know how much fuck. You know how many people that makes happy when you yeah, hit the makes fucking me happy. I like singing that fucking song. Yeah, um, but, you know, but he's but like, I like this has to be in the set all the time. Always, all the time. Always. <laughs> the the I think I think to just to end it off, I uh, I I, I want to have more conversations like this. We're gonna have to have you on for a part two. Where sure. we'll go full building seven, full Gulf of Tonkin. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm reading up on the Civil War now. I got this whole thing about the real Abe Lincoln. I'm gonna read up on. Oh yeah, about this? yeah, we can go the into real. that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, oh boy, that that one's goes... gonna get us kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. But uh, Good. but yeah. because... that, sh- that that tells you right there that we're onto something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll edit you know back in. Edit back in right here. Where can they find you guys? Where can they see you? Where can they buy the records? Pre-order, if you have any of that information. Uh, pre-order at Rat Pack Records, ratpack.com. You can, you know the dates, Mark. Yeah, and in any of the any of the places where, you know, Amazon, all iTunes, everywhere. You can pre-order it everywhere, and it does matter. And um, mm-hmm. dates, so let's see, we got June, June 3rd, Chicago, June 4th, Detroit. June 23rd and 24th in New Bedford, Mass. 25th in New Jersey at Ashbury Lanes. And um, that's all in the States until August. But that's one's the States. Yep. And cool. then we have uh, Alcatraz Fest. And then we have uh, Jailbreak Fest in Denmark. Great. Um, it was in August. So there's yeah. some, definitely a, some festivals going on. We're playing Poland and uh, Keep It True Rising in Germany in October. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, we're filling in all the time, and now that things are kind of accelerating, you know, that there are definitely more offers coming in, and we're mm-hmm. definitely uh, going to be, we'll be out there, you know. Awesome! Sure. Yeah, we'll get you Milwaukee Metal Fest twenty twenty four. Let's Fuck do me. it. November to dismember. We'll bring that back. We'll bring March Metal Meltdown back. So I, I'm going to see you guys. Dismember. We're going to bring you back in November. Let's do it. We'll, I'll, I'll get a venue in LA. Let's do it. Metal <laughs> Church, November to dismember. And then I'll get you for March Metal Meltdown in Jersey in next March, too. Let's do it. Let's and do it. it. Put on. Uh, and we'll, I'll, hey, listen, if we got to do Metal Church one night, Ross the Boss the other night, well, I'll work it out. <laughs> Fly everybody in. Fuck it. We'll kill, we'll kill with power. And, and be, one last thing. As far as the same name of the band, name of the album, name of the song. The best to do it is Metal Church, right? If you're going to name the band the same as the song and the same as the album, who true. else has done it better? Yes, that's true. Metal Church, Metal Church, Metal Church. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are yep. just a quick, quick, quick outro for everybody right now. Thank you, IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JOST10. Thank you, MonarchHeavy.com. Make sure you pre-order the new Sam Nuri Desiderium album and come see them live with yours truly, May 25th at the Rave Bar. The Rave.com slash MetalFest for tickets and pre-order the album at MonarchHeavy.com. Use the promo code 666 for 15% off. Also, thank you to Manscaped, manscaped.com, promo code JOSTA for free shipping plus 20% off. Martyrstore.net to get your Paul Bostaff meet and greets, Kirk Winstein, Ripper, Napalm Death, Dying Fetus. Actually, Fear Factor and Dying Fetus are going to be sold out by the time you hear this. So go to martyrstore.net, use the code Paul B. If you're coming to Milwaukee Metal Fest and you want to cut the line for meet and greets, Warbringer and of course, meet and greet, dude. <laughs> oh, yo, come in with Warbringer and just bring fucking a tank and some fucking grenades and some like just wear your camo for the Warbringer meet and greet. You got to. That's it, man. That's how I'm gonna roll it. <laughs> and uh, and of course, Century Media dot store. They're just killing it right now. We have a bunch of their amazing bands on the festival. Napalm Death, Frozen Soul, whose new album is coming out tomorrow. For, uh, glacial domination which you can get at centurymedia.store also check out jesus peace sanguisugabog on earth and many others and last but certainly not least metal blade records such a fitting sponsor for such an infamous and legendary festival 
<clears throat> excuse me, metalbladerecords.com slash goat whore to check out goat whore's latest album. And while I have you check out metalblade.com slash death ray vision and check out the new death ray vision album, which is coming out June 30th. All right, everybody have a great weekend. We'll be back next week. Who do we got? We got Marty Freeman. We got Dave Lombardo. We got Brian Fair from Shadows Fall. We got Brandon Boyd from Incubus. We got a killer's murderer's row coming up over the next two weeks. And uh, up Three next, we got Monty Bernard from Bleed, Bleed the Sky. Oh, great episode with Monty. That was awesome. Yeah. Drink your coffee. Do your push-ups. Listen to death metal. Bye-bye. All right, cool. Um, let's hop Close over. This Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bowen, Ryan St, Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arnorock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.